in Japan, primarily <coughs> drink first. Ah. All right, so let's talk about anime, specifically the philosophy in anime. So for the last two years, during the start of the pandemic, I've been watching a lot of anime series and I really like it. So for those of you who doesn't know, anime is a Japanese animated film which normally comes from manga. So manga is a Japanese illustration. I'm not sure if I can use the word comic to, to describe it, but it is an, a Japanese illustration. I will be talking about a specific type of manga, which is the shonen manga. So shonen manga is one of the types of manga series which targets a certain demographics. So these demographics are boys, are teenage boys, young males from the ages 12 to 18. Well, usually in shonen manga, there's a common thing happening among them. And this is when the protagonist or the main character wanted to become the best or the greatest or the strongest. Well, we can see this in a lot of anime series. For example, Luffy, he wanted to become the greatest pirate king. Naruto wanted to become a Hokage. Asta in Black Clover wanted to become the Wizard King. And in My Hero Academia, we all know that Deku wanted to become the greatest hero. So all of these anime are kind of the same in that sense. So these characters will normally proclaim that they are going to be the best all throughout the plot and the development of the series. Well, the question is, what if, despite their hard work, they reach a point where hard work didn't change a thing? Because in shonen manga, normally the protagonist or the main character will challenge the fate. They will go against destiny. They will put so much effort and do a lot of hard work just to reach their goal of becoming the best. And we all know that it is not always the case in real life. What if Asta didn't grow his arm back? So this set of shonen logic can be dangerous to a certain demographic, especially for teenage boys who are suffering depression. Comparing themselves to a character who always succeeds in the end might be dangerous for them. Let's try to look at reaching goals through the lens of Stoic philosophy. This philosophy is not about challenging your fate, but going with it. Destiny is meant to happen even if you delay it. Stoic is telling us to accept things that we cannot change. So in real life, it means Asta should accept the possibility of not becoming the Wizard King because of his inability to fight. But since it's an anime, everything can be possible. Well, one of the lessons we can learn from Stoic philosophy is that we have the ability to decide which direction we should look at. We can look at the direction of inability and become miserable forever. Or we can look at the direction of acceptance and become grateful for what we have. Well, the real life Asta can look at the latter and just be grateful for just being alive. Remember that you can frame your goals in such a way where you cannot fail. Stoic philosophy would reframe Asta's goal of becoming a wizard king by doing the best within his power because he cannot do anything more than that. Well, in the end, let's say he didn't become the wizard king. Still, he committed himself in the process of doing his best. Well, in contrast, there is another anime series that I've watched that tries to challenge this shonen logic. It is called The Demon Slayer. Kimetsu no Yaiba, or The Demon Slayer, offers a different approach to shonen manga. Unlike the other shonen series, Demon Slayer showed the negative result of this shonen philosophy of always succeeding your best. Koko Shibo was Michikatsu Chugikuni when he was still a human. His twin brother, Yurichi Tugikuni, was known to be the greatest demon slayer in the entire manga series. Since they were young, Michikatsu always competed with Yurichi in becoming the strongest. But Yurichi, his twin brother, even if he doesn't have the need to become the number one, he always comes out to becoming the best. So if you follow the traditional shonen logic, 
where the one who puts effort should become the strongest, then Koko Shibo should become the best samurai, since he always worked hard to becoming the strongest. But Demon Slayer reversed this logic, where Yorichi, who isn't obsessed of becoming the number one, ends up to becoming the greatest. Demon Slayer kind of showed us the dark side of this shonen logic, where the one who is very obsessed and attached in becoming the greatest or the strongest and who always challenges the fate doesn't always have to be the victorious in the end. Koko Shibo, despite turning into a demon, which basically amplifies his power, becoming immortal, is still way far behind from his 60-year-old twin brother, Yorichi, when they face again in a battle. Well, basically what Stoic philosophy is teaching us is to do our best. And by doing our best, we have to make sure that we also enjoy the journey that comes with the process. We should always look at the direction of acceptance and try to see and enjoy the things that we have and be happy about it. We can focus on the reasons we have to be grateful rather than choosing to be miserable. Okay, for my final note, if we are obsessed over the outcome rather than focusing on the process, it will eventually hurt more rather than improve you more. Remember that. Bye.